Good morning. My name is Megan Edwards of Focus Communications, and today we're getting the latest updates from Kuya Silver, which trades on the Canadian Stock Exchange under the symbol KUYA. Joining me once again is Kuya's president and CEO, David Stein. David, thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you, Megan. My pleasure. Now, for our listeners who are still new to the Kuya story, could you give us a brief introduction to the company? Sure. <clears throat> we have two flagship projects. Uh, we've got our uh, Bethania silver mine, a recent past producing silver mine in Peru that we have, you know, since we've owned it for a couple, a few years, uh, we've um, done a resource on it. We've done permitting and basic and a PEA and then preparing to put it back into production. So it's a really exciting high grade uh, silver project with a lot of exploration upside. We've discovered a lot more veins at surface and with our drilling, everything is open at depth as well. So it's, it's a project with huge potential that we're that we're uh, moving forward. And then the other, I guess, part of our story is uh, the Silver Kings project, which is in uh, Northern Ontario, Canada. It's in the historic cobalt uh, silver mining camp. Uh, and it is, uh, it's a project where we've accumulated a big land package with lots of historical mines and targets on it, but we actually made a brand new discovery earlier this year um, which we are, we're calling the Angus vein. It's on the Campbell Crawford property. So those are the two, that's, that's the two parts of our company is Bethania and the Silver Kings project. And the company recently announced the commencement of its next phase of drilling at Silver Kings. But before we talk about the drill program, can you give us a quick overview of the project and your area of focus in the world-class mining camp? Sure. Uh, we, uh, the cobalt mining camp started producing silver and cobalt in the early 20th century, like around 1904, I think the first mine was opened. And it, gra it very rapidly grew to be one of the biggest silver mining camps in the world. And then, um, you know, continued production until the 1980s. It's seen very little work since then for about, you know, 40 years. Uh, basically no production and very little exploration. We uh, started accumulating uh, properties, uh, acquiring properties, both through acquisitions and staking our own claims back in uh, 2021. So this is now, you know, two years later, we have about 18,000 hectares combined uh, claims and patents and leases. And we're focused on this northern area uh, near the Kerr Lake at the moment, which is close to the town of Cobalt, where the original discovery was made and where most of the production was. Um, and, you know, really what we're looking for here is very high grade, small tonnage, uh, but, but very high grade deposits that can be mined, uh, you know, cheaply and quickly and, and uh, you know, much like they were doing 100 years ago. Mm. Something that stood out in your release was the map that highlighted the various historic mines around your Kerr property at Silver Kings. For our listeners, can you walk us through this map and what it tells you about the district? Sure. Well, I, since we made our discovery uh, of the Angus back in March, April of this year, a lot of people ask me, you know, how big could it be? And obviously, when you're in the early phases of exploration, it's a difficult question to answer. But I think in our case, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's, you know, 80 plus years of mining history all around us. And a lot, you know, a lot of work and documentation uh, that was that was done in this area. So we, we do have a good sense of what kind of uh, production and resource size could be possible if you hit on one of these clusters of veins and uh, which, you know, I think we have at Angus. So, I mean, if you look at this map on this uh, slide, you're seeing these are all the historical mines that were all very kind of small, you know, 10, 20 hectare properties. And some of these produced tens of millions of ounces, 20, 30, 40 million ounces. The O'Brien property, which is a little bigger, produced more than 40 million ounces. Um, and, you know, collectively together, just around the town of Cobalt, you have over 300 million ounces of production. That would probably be one mine today, by the way. And then uh, around the Kerr Lake area, where, where most of the property that we own is located, um, you've got over 60 million ounces of historical production there. So when we look at where our discovery was, it's the Campbell Crawford uh, property there. Uh, you can see it on the, on the map in red. 
what's kind of interesting is that there's absolutely no production from this property. Um, and there's no production from Air Giot either, which is the one next door to it that we have, uh, that we, uh, that we're exploring now as well. And why was there no production? Well, because the, the veins were covered by several hundred meters of overburden there, this Nipissing diabase, which tends to be barren, uh, d- doesn't host the silver veins in this particular, in the cobalt camp. So, uh, when we drilled through that, we were able to hit our, uh, our silver discovery about 200 meters deep. So as mentioned, Kuya just commenced a 6,000 meter program. Can you discuss the focus of this program and any additional targets the company will look to be testing? Yeah, our focus for this program is going to be on uh, fleshing out the Angus vein and the other veins that we found uh, both on surface and through drilling in our previous uh, campaign, which was very small, by the way. So uh, we um, we have this. We have the Angus vein. You can see on this map here, uh, McNamara, which is parallel to it. Uh, this, by the way, down here, right at this contact, is where we hit our three meters of uh, fifteen over fifteen thousand grams per ton silver. So more than one point five percent silver. And um, and then on the Air Geod property, which would be just off this map. We have another vein that we've uh, identified at surface uh, over here called the Clark vein. So we're going to be drilling both of those at depth, try and hit them right at that contact, and then you know see how big these vein systems can be. Um, you know when you when when we look at the drilling that we did uh, around the Angus vein discovery, there's a lot of not only the main vein but a lot of structure around it that seems to host silver as well, including these veinlets that are in the wall rock. Um, and so we really want to get a sense of all of that structure. And, uh, and so that is going to be a really important part of this drill program. And it's really going to take us from sort of an anecdotal discovery is what we had in March, April of this year, uh, with a couple of drill holes to now, you know, fleshing out how big could it be, um, the continuity of this, uh, along strike and at depth, and also whether we can find other veins that have the same kind of mineralization like McNamara and potentially Clark, the Clark vein as well. Well, thank you so much, David. And before we let you go, could you let our listeners know why they should be keeping an eye on Kuya for the remainder of the year and 2024? Sure. Well, the main reason is, is that we're just, we're going to be really, really active on multiple fronts. And that is, that means that we can create a lot of value um, by for example, uh, you know, drilling out uh, the new Angus Bain discovery in the Campbell Crawford zone uh, at Silver Kings. Uh, we can add value at Bethania, both through exploration and development there, uh, bringing uh, the, um, the Bethania mine into production and then also getting after some of the other targets we have there, um, which we haven't done any work on, uh, you know, over the past year. So uh, we have, you know, two or three different ways that we can add value for our shareholders, not just, so we're not just a single sort of exploration focused company where, where there's only really one path forward. We have multiple paths to create value. And I think that makes us a really unique investment opportunity in the silver space. Well, thank you again for your time today, David. And we look forward to having you back on with additional updates soon. Thanks, Megan, my pleasure.